There is a big lie about choke tubes and pattern density that way too many hunters believe, and today we are gonna pull back the curtain on this thing. Hey, George here with the New Hunter's Guide, and today I'm gonna be addressing a viewer question. As always, if you guys have questions, just let me know down in the comments below. I keep a running list of questions that I'm just waiting for the right time to address. And today, I wanna to talk about a big lie that has been pervasive in the waterfowl hunting community, but it's bigger than that. It extends out into all wing shooting, and this is something that has been pushed by shotgun manufacturers, chiefly by choke to manufacturers and also big by ammunition manufacturers. This is something that really has been bothering me lately and after a bunch of the pattern testing and ballistics gel testing videos that I've done this year has really surfaced in the questions and comments quite often and today guys I really feel the need to sort of grab the hunting community by the front of the shirt and just shake people and say hey wake up from this marketing induced delirium this stupor that people are in believing something that is just absolutely not tied to reality. You see, you have a lot of people out there today that are relentlessly chasing the absolute best choke tube pattern possible. They want the highest pattern density, the most pellets on paper, the highest percentage of pellets from the shotgun shell onto the paper as humanly possible. And what you have happening here is this desperate, money-driven grab for higher and higher pattern density percentage counts to the point, guys, where it is no longer making sense. A lot of people are looking for, and now some shell manufacturers are even guaranteeing the ability to get 80% pattern density, 90% pattern density. That's 90% of the pellets inside of a shotgun shell hitting a target in a 30-inch circle at 40 yards. That is a ridiculously high percentage of pellets on paper and people are doing everything that they can to try to get into the 90 zone 90 95 percent is close to the fabled and mythical 100 percent pattern density as humanly possible and guys i need to tell you right now this is ridiculous it's not just crazy it is a bad thing this is not good you do not want pattern density that high at 40 yards for pretty much all regular hunting applications. It is a bad thing. I'm gonna say it again. It's not what you want. Now, there are some exceptions. I'll talk about those momentarily. But by and large, guys, you gotta think about what's going on here. If 90% of your pellets are in a 30-inch circle at 40 yards, 40 yards typically being about the maximum distance for bird shooting, then how many pellets are in a circle at 30 yards? What's the pattern look like at 20 yards? So many times you've got these 95% patterns at 40 yards and at 20 yards, your pattern's about the size of a softball. All right, guys, that's kind of like duck hunting with a slug gun. You're gonna miss a ton of shots at close to medium range, and the ones that you do hit, you are gonna explode that bird. There's not gonna be anything left of it. This is not ideal. All right, and we're not just out there trying to see how many birds we can kill because there are too many birds. Our goal here is to eat these birds. And so what happens at 40 yards then when you've got a 95% pattern? And in a lot of these shells, you're seeing 200 pellets, 250, 300 pellets, depending on how big the shell is, how many ounces of shot you have, what size the shot is. And that many pellets, say you've got 300 pellets in a 30 inch circle at 40 yards, what does that do to a wood duck? There is nothing left of meat that you can eat on that bird. It is just riddled with pellets and a lot of people say well you know I want to be able to shoot further well the thing is with most modern ammunition you really can't shoot a whole lot further than 40 yards 40 yards is about your max range especially if you're hunting with steel you can maybe get to 45 yards maybe 50 yards if you were using big shot and denser materials you can be effective to a little bit further range but by and large most people that are shooting birds they're shooting them in like the 25 to 30 yard range that is ideal and then if you've got 95 percent pattern density at 40 yards 
Everything closer than that is a disaster, and even 40 yards can be a disaster. But people are reading the boxes of ammunition manufacturers, they watch YouTube videos, even some of the videos I've done, and they say, wow, he got 90% pattern density with that shell and that choke tube. That is exactly what you need. Guys, no, listen to me. A lot of the time, if I get a 90% pattern with a particular choke at 40 yards, if I'm gonna hunt with that shell, I'm gonna use a bigger choke. I don't want the pattern to be that tight at 40 yards. What is the ideal pattern? Well guys, the ideal pattern density in the majority of situations, like I said, I'll talk about exceptions shortly, is right around the 70% range at 40 yards. That is right around ideal for mid-range hunting applications. That's still gonna give you the pattern density you need to be devastating at 40 yards, but you can still shoot birds that are closer without absolutely destroying them. About 70%, that's not the minimum, that's about the maximum. You don't really want it a whole lot denser than that unless you're using really big shot. And a lot of times people see, oh, they're, they see someone with 85 or 90 or 95% pattern and they just dream about that, oh, if my patterns were that good, I would shoot more birds, I'd bring more ducks home, I'd take more geese. Actually, guys, you probably wouldn't. You would probably take fewer birds and the birds that you did take, there wouldn't be much edible meat left on them. This is not turkey hunting. In turkey hunting, you want the smallest, densest pattern possible so you can hit that turkey in the head, take it down instantly with a quick kill, and the denser the pattern, the less pellets are getting in the meat of that bird. So in that scenario, because the bird has a long neck and you're shooting at the head, denser pattern means you save more meat, and the bird is on the ground. Shooting birds in the air is a completely different deal. You're looking looking for about 70% pattern density with number five shot, number four shot, number three shot at 40 yards if you're doing mid-range hunting. If you're doing short-range hunting, even that is too much. You need to open up that choke some. A lot of people have been talking lately, well, you know, denser patterns, cleaner kills, you know, clean hit, clean miss. And I'm all for that. I completely believe in that methodology. However, there is utter overkill also. Clean hit, clean miss is right in the middle of the road, but completely and totally destroying and disintegrating that bird, that is way off on the other side. Yeah, it's a clean hit or clean miss, but it is not doing what we want it to do as bird hunters. And guys, no choke tube or ammunition manufacturers are sponsoring this video. In fact, I'm sure some would prefer I not be doing this video, but that's okay. I'd ask you to please support the channel by hitting the thumbs up button so these videos can reach more people and if you like videos like this field tests kicking the tires on assumptions go ahead and click subscribe also this is the channel for you and if you are chasing this unrealistic expectation of ridiculously high pattern densities you're gonna keep spending money you're gonna keep buying chokes you might buy different guns you're gonna keep buying different shells you're gonna buy the most expensive shells out there because you're chasing a number and a number doesn't kill ducks a a number doesn't bring home pheasants or doves or anything else. You have to think bigger than that. You've got a pattern at different ranges. You have to look at what range do I most often take birds at and make sure your pattern is perfect at that range. And usually you're talking about a 70% pattern at the range you're actually taking birds. Now the exceptions. There are times when you do want pattern density that is off the charts. Say you are hunting late season geese and you're getting passing shots only and a lot of the shots you're taking are maybe 50 yards or possibly even higher and you're hunting with number two shot number one shot bb shot well in that situation you may very well want to have a 90 percent pattern at 40 yards because there's not that many pellets in the shell to begin with and you're pushing out your range further with bigger shot so in those situations and scenarios you probably do want 
pattern density that's off the charts like that. But you're talking about pattern density at 40 yards and you're actually shooting out further and you're using big pellets where you might only have 70, 80, 90, 100 in the entire shell and you're trying to hit a goose. I've heard of people that have been goose hunting in super specialized applications where they're using big shotguns with 32 inch barrels, turkey chokes, and TSS shot to take shots at honkers flying at 100 yards above the river and that's the only way they can hunt them. Now I'm not endorsing that but that is a very specialized kind of approach and those tactics should never be applied to regular waterfowl hunting. The other exception would be say you're jump hunting and you're walking along streams, creeks, water, whatever it is, and you're trying to get shots at birds on the water or shortly after they take off, and you're just not getting closer than maybe 40 yards. Well, in that situation, a 90% pattern is probably something that would be helpful for you because you're basically trying to hit that duck in the head while it's swimming on the water. Again, I'm not endorsing this or recommending this approach, but if that's how you're hunting, then maybe having the ability to get that kind of a pattern could be right for you. However, if you're hunting in a blind in the morning and then if you don't get your limit, you're going out jump hunting in the afternoon, just take different chokes. Use a choke that gives you an ideal pattern in the blind and then you can always tighten up chokes or even use tighter performing ammunition whenever you go out on your walkabout. And let me leave you guys with one last big nugget and that is cost. A lot of these ammunitions that are labeled on the box that they're gonna get these crazy patterns at 40 yards and beyond, they cost a lot more than basically the exact same ammunition, all things being even, except for the box doesn't have that disclaimer on it. So you're often paying a lot more for the ammo and going through a half a dozen choke tubes to find one that's a good synergy with that ammo to get these crazy patterns. If you focus on an ideal pattern, which is more like 70% at 40 yards, then you can save a lot of money on ammo, you can often save a lot of money on choke tubes and you can rest at night knowing your shotgun which is a just a good average performing shotgun is up to the task you don't have to spend more money trying different barrels or doing all sorts of things to the forcing cone you can get perfect ideal results with regular equipment and regular shells most of the time if you have a fairly decent choke tube now what you guys need to do next is click on this video right here and watch as i pattern test four of the biggest bismuth brands on the market Market to see how they do and keep all of these details in mind while you're watching this. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and go get them in the woods.